Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Top Dem turns on awful Pelosi, she said women and our party back decades, it's brutal. Democratic Congressman John Conyers has been accused of sexual misconduct by multiple women, and clearly needs to resign. However, in the same way she covered for fellow Democrat Bill Clinton, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been enabling sex predator Conyers. Thankfully, one Democratic Congresswoman has boldly turned against Rep. Pelosi and called her out publicly for what she did. Stated Rep. Kathleen Rice of New York about Nancy, I think that her comments on Sunday set women back and, quite frankly, our party back, decades. Rep. Rice was making reference to an appearance Rep. Pelosi made on Meet the Press where she said about embattled Conyers, we are strengthened by due process. Just because someone is accused, was it one accusation? Was it two? John Conyers is an icon in our country. He's done a great deal to protect women. She then suggested that she did not believe the woman who have spoken out against John. Congresswoman Rice continued her assault on Pelosi, explaining, I think that we ceded the moral high ground on Sunday when our leader said on Meet the Press that John Conyers was an icon and we don't even know who these women are, when she was fully aware that the woman in question was bound by a non-disclosure agreement. She added, I think we had an opportunity to stake that moral high ground when you have a president who is supporting a man for Senate who, all credible allegations that have not been refuted, showed him to be a predator of teenage girls. Are you glad this brave dissenting Democrat spoke out against crooked Nancy? University's newspaper just called for white death, your DNA is an abomination. Texas State is a taxpayer-funded university, and apparently some of that tax money Texas residents are paying is going to give racists a platform to spread their hatred. The university's official student newspaper The University Star recently published a piece by a student named Rudy Martinez that features a cartoon image that reads, White is over. If you want it. In the article, the non-white author makes the argument that white people are fundamentally evil. States Martinez, when I think of all the white people I have ever encountered, whether they've been professors, peers, lovers, friends, police officers, etc., there is perhaps only a dozen I would consider decent. He later claims, whiteness will be over because we want it to be. And when it dies, there will be millions of cultural zombies aimlessly wandering across a vastly changed landscape. Rudy argues that whiteness is a construct used to perpetuate the system of racist power and says white death will mean liberation for all. Are you disgusted that this appallingly racist opinion piece was allowed to be printed by a public university? Former Texas State student body president Andrew Homan called out the student and the paper for this disgusting piece, stating, this is blatant racism against white people for nothing other than the color of their skin. Rudy literally states he hates white people because we shouldn't exist. No one is going to stop Rudy from accomplishing what he wants, I guess aside from his lack of intellect. No one is going to take this paper seriously if the editorial board continues to allow baseless garbage to be published week in and week out. Do you agree? Roy Moore challenges Lib Kimmel, come down here to Alabama if you want to mock our Christian values. Liberal comedians somehow believe that they can shame people in red states to vote for Democrats through crude jokes. Unfortunately for them, liberal efforts to sway voters in Montana and Georgia congressional races have already failed horribly, and Democrats are about to get defeated once again in Alabama. Republican candidate Roy Moore who has faced sexual assault accusations from some women as per the current trend, was delivering a speech at Theodore Alabama's Magnolia Springs Baptist Church when a comic on Jimmy Kimmel's program named Tony Barbieri, 
playing the character Jake Bird, cut off Moore's speech and screamed, That's a man's man. Does that look like the face of a molester? Thankfully, one congregant shouted at Barbieri, Get on out of here. You ought to be ashamed. You're in a church. You ought to be ashamed to even be from here. Get on out of here. The pastor also took action, grabbing the microphone and declaring, I must remind everyone present this is a worship service. And by the way it is illegal to disturb a worship service. People cheered, and the pastor continued, the next one who disturbs the service will be turned over to the police. As the pastor of this church, I'm saying we're going to do things peacefully and in order. If you love Roy Moore or you hate Roy Moore, listen. Roy Moore took matters in his own hands when he responded to Liberal Kimmel via Twitter, saying, At Jimmy Kimmel if you want to mock our Christian values, come down here to Alabama and do it man to man. Hashtag A. Nelson are you glad Moore is standing up against this liberal hatred? MSNBC contributors tweet about who he wants to rape his daughter goes viral, it's disturbing. MSNBC contributor and liberal radio host Sam Setter wrote a very disturbing tweet that has now gone viral. He is extremely anti-Trump. Trump knows his base, i.e. the majority of the Republican Party, enjoys him attacking black people, he tweeted on November 19. Here's my chart on how politics in this country became so rancid. He tweeted with a photo of the Republican Party elephant symbol. But none of those compare what he wrote in 2009. Don Carey Polanski, but I hope if my daughter is ever raped it is by an older truly talented man w slash a great sense of mise-en-scene, he tweeted. Like most of the anti-Trump celebrities and media personalities, Sam Setter is a seriously messed up guy. One user found the old tweet and shared it. It soon went viral. At MSNBC, just thought you might want to know what your contributor, at Sam Setter, thinks about sexual assault and rape. Trivializing and mocking the rape of a child, in regards to the Roman Polanski child rape charge. This is absolutely abhorrent and disgusting, wrote one user. Sam Setter deleted his tweet without any comment. People attacked him for it. Oh hi, at Sam Setter, I want to know why you deleted this tweet from eight years ago. Care to comment? Wrote another user. What is wrong with Democrats? Pro Hillary Live writer says it's fine if there are no men in the world. It is very disturbing that popular Teen Vogue magazine, which is marketed to American girls as young as 11 years old, has now become a platform for the promotion of divisive and hatred-filled left-wing ideas. The chief instigator of change at this magazine, which is supposed to be about fashion and other styles for preteen and teen girls, is a columnist named Lauren Duca, who has written many inflammatory articles for the magazine with titles such as Fox News is undermining American democracy and are any of us still proud to be American. Duca recently outdid herself when she decided to fix her sights on a new target for her hatred, the 48% of America's population that is male. In a tweet dated November 29, the Teen Vogue writer posted on her Twitter account, It's fine if we get to the point where there are no men on TV. It's fine if we get to the point where there are no men in the White House. Instead of getting widespread condemnation from her peers in the publishing industry for her bigoted and dangerous remark, she got backed up by Lure Magazine's senior social media editor Owen Yusha. Posted Yusha in response to Lauren's tweet, It's fine if we get to the point where there are no men in the world. This evidently pleased Duka, who retweeted Owen's post and added, Those in favor of the motion, say aye. These two employees were not censured by the management of their magazines, which are both owned by Condé Nast. Do you think Duka and Yusha deserve to be fired? Sarandon doubles down against Hillary and her crazy fans, they told her I hope you're raped. 
Academy Award-winning actress Susan Sarandon was slammed by Democrats during the 2016 election for refusing to back Hillary Clinton, and she drew renewed ire from them recently when she forcefully stated in an interview that she does not regret not voting for Hillary. Sarandon doubled down on her anti-Hillary comments, and revealed how she was attacked in a very disturbing way by some of Clinton's fanatical supporters. In her interview, she trashed Clinton-style feminist idea that all women have to be shrill, saying, it's come back, and it's gotten warped, especially with the election, where if you're a woman you have to support Hillary Clinton. She says that during the election, left-wing Hillary backers assaulted her not checking her white privilege, of throwing away her vote on a third-party candidate, the Green Party nominee, Jill Stein, during the U.S. presidential election and of recklessly espousing a political cause and let Trump in through the back door. Disturbingly, she says that these same liberals sent her messages that said, I hope your crotch is grabbed and I hope you're raped. When Susan was asked what it felt like to be recently called an idiot in the pretentious New York Review of Books, the actress replied, I'm flattered. Sarandon added, cuttingly, I mean it's very flattering to think that I, on my own, cost the election. That my little voice was the deciding factor. The actress then stated that when some of her gay friends said to her that they felt bad for Hillary after she was defeated, she told her friends, she's not authentic. She's been terrible to gay people for the longest time. She's an opportunist. And then I'm like, okay, let's not talk about it anymore. Are you glad Sarandon continues to speak the truth to liberals about Hillary?